Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my channel Captain SQ where we're going to discuss on airbus systems, emergency procedures and supplementary techniques on how to fly the plane. A320 Emergency Electrical Configuration Remaining Systems and Steps to Take Part 2 Disclaimer, always refer to your company manuals, this video is merely a guide. Before we start, do smash the like button and subscribe if you want to see more of these videos. Let's continue part 2, APU. If both AC bus 1 and 2 fail, the probability of a successful APU generation connection is low. Therefore, APU start attempts should be avoided. Flight time on batteries only is limited to 22 minutes. With each APU start attempt, this will be significantly reduced by about 3.5 minutes. APU start is unavailable for 45 seconds following the loss of both generators. APU start on batteries is limited to flight level 250. FMGC1 is lost temporarily. It can be regained by flight crew passing through the MCDU menu page. Navigation only ILS1, DME1, ADF1 and VOR1 remains available. Backup NAV8 tuning for the approach on the RMP should be used as the FMGC1 will be lost when the emergency generator is no longer powered. Landing gear extension or ram air turbine or the red stalls. Select NAV, green backup NAV light will illuminate and select approach 8. Tune frequency and select. Select inbound course or radio. In NAV backup mode, the flight crew can select radio communications as they would in normal mode. Approach considerations, the landing distance is almost double that of a normal landing and this should be taken into account when choosing a diversion airfield. Flaps and slats are slow, so fly a long, stabilized approach. The approach speed must be at least minimum red speed of 140 knots to keep the emergency generator supplying the electrical network. Use flaps 3 for landing. Configure to flaps 3 before selecting the gear down. Only reversal 1 is available. On the approach, decelerate and configure to flaps 3. The pilot monitoring will need to check speeds against PFD 1 or standby instruments. Do not reduce speed below 140 knots as the rat will stall. The approach speed can now be reduced to V approach VLS plus 10 knots. RA1 and 2 are lost with their associated callouts and callouts will be made by pilot monitoring from the pressure altimeter. Landing gear extension will be delayed until reaching 1000 feet AAL. The gear is lowered normally. Flight control law will revert to direct law. The emergency generator is not supplied when the gear is extended or if the rat stalls below 140 knots. It depends on the aircraft serial number. AC shed essentials and DC shed essential bars are shed. The emergency generation network is automatically transferred to the batteries. Flight time is now limited to a maximum of 22 minutes as batteries are the only remaining electrical source. FMGC1 is lost. All external lights will be unavailable which is the landing, strobes, beacon and taxi lights. Only reversal 1 is available on landing. Alternate braking with yellow hydraulic pressure modulation up to 1000 psi will be used. The nose wheel steering and anti-skid are lost so use differential braking to steer the aircraft. And below 50 feet, all CRTs will be lost and all local warning and caution switch indications are lost. The parking brake is available, towing from the runway should be considered. And that's it for emergency electrical configuration for the A320. Do smash the like button and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.